Morning guys. Dave and Terry are coming today on something a little different. Don't know if you can hear it, but uh, they'll be here in just a second. Good morning. I only missed one shift. <laughs> <laughs> I go to shift like this to upshift. I'm like, oh, oh there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, that was it. Hi, Terry. How are you? Good. Good. Buongiorno. <laughs> What's that? Buongiorno. That must be Italian. <laughs> it is. I hope so. <laughs> well, my interpretation of Italian, anyway. Uh, this is my 2001 V11 Sport Moto Guzzi. Obviously not British like a lot of the stuff that shows up at Mike's uh, place, but somebody requested uh, Moto Guzzi, so we're going to give them a good dose of some proper Moto Guzzi's at least. There's this big red one in my way, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that one in a minute. You've had this for a, a little while now, haven't you? Yeah. So the first time I saw a green V11 Sport, I was at the uh, Corvallis swap meet. It was sitting in the back of a truck and I saw that thing and I was instantly in Italian lust, which if you've been that's around really Italian works, bikes, it? that's exactly how that's it works. Right. And you hear about it all the time and until you get it, you don't know what it is and then you get it and then you're like, oh, I got it now. <laughs> of course, at the time, I, you know, I wasn't really thinking about it and I didn't really do anything for quite a while. And then I had my a 2009 Triumph Bonneville and that was kind of like a daily driver, you know, what we call uh, in our circle, a push button bike. You push the button and you can go and you never have to think about it twice. And finally, I was starting to look again seriously at one of these types of Moto Guzzi's and I hung out on the uh, v11lemans.com forum, which once you start going onto a forum, then you know you're in trouble because you're gonna end up with a bike one way or another. And I asked, started asking the guys on the forum, hey, I'm kind of looking for one of these. At the time, I still had my, my Triumph. And somebody spotted this bike in, on Craigslist down in San Francisco. Just what I was looking for, a good rider quality. It's not show quality, obviously. And I uh, immediately sold my Triumph at a fair price. And at that point, now I had cash, which if you're a bike guy, as soon as you got money in your pocket, you're gonna get another bike. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> you don't really save that up for some reason. The bike had been for sale for quite a while, which is not unusual for Guzzi's. There's a, it's a special kind of crazy to have a Moto Guzzi. And so I was contacting the guy uh, down in California, super nice guy, um, and uh, we, we just set up a deal and uh, I flew down. He picked me up from the airport. We went over to his house, exchanged pleasantries, exchanged money, and I rode off. I'd never ridden the bike. I'd never ridden this type of bike. And immediately I had no idea what I was doing, but I did it anyways. And for, for us here up in Oregon, we're just not used to that California traffic. So I immediately get on the bike and I'm on the 880 in California, lane splitting at 80 miles an hour with the rest of the bikers. It was pretty, pretty intense. I was lucky to stay with a friend of mine down there in the Bay Area for the night. And the next day I took off and went up the, uh, the coast and came back in a couple days. And I've had it ever since, and this is my current push button bike. Cool. At 2001, it's relatively new, but you know, at this point, these are starting to be almost considered classics. Um, but uh, there's definitely, there's definitely something about the Moto Guzzi. You know, you, the one comparison that you get a lot is it's it's very torquey like a Norton, um, but it, but the other difference though, it revs like crazy um, for such a big uh, twin cylinder, uh, and it's got the big vibration. It shakes a little bit. It, it wobbles from side to side when you're idling, but it really reminds you of a command. A commander's gonna jump up and down, where these kind of flop back and forth a little bit. But there's definitely a lot of character with these bikes. You know, I think they're roughly around 80 horsepower. Um, you know, it's a big, heavy bike. It's not a sport bike. They call it a sport, it's not sporty. It looks sporty, it's sporty-ish, um, but it's more of a GT 
sport tourer, even though uh, it's, you know, you're kind of crouched a little bit. It's definitely different from the racing crouch on my, my production racer replica. And you got those mufflers, those silencers yes. from abroad, didn't you? So I, this bike came with the stock silencers, which are just enormous. They're heavy and they're, they muffle the sound too much. And, you know, and so I was looking for exhaust options uh, for this. And these are Mistral's, which is an Italian brand. And uh, they, they sound pretty healthy. These ones here, I think the one on the far side here had been been crashed a little bit. It's got some dents in it, but uh, they were pretty inexpensive. Brand new, I think it's about 800 plus for the for the pair of mufflers. And I ended up paying, I think, uh, $100 for the mufflers. And they came out of Norway, and it, they cost me more to ship them than I actually paid for the mufflers. We referred to your bike as the Norwegian Thunder for a while, didn't we? It does thunder quite a bit. So yeah, this is kind of like the, the go-to bike when, when I need something to ride, especially in the wintertime maybe when you don't feel like kickstarting a, a Norton or something like that. Unfortunately though, you know, with a pair of Nortons right now going, this is probably the last bike I, I try to go for during the day. I can't remember the last time I rode this. It's probably been six months or so. And as I said, coming in here, I only missed the shift once. <laughs> Thank you, Terry, for coming over. Do appreciate it. Well, good to be here, Mike. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're a relatively new member to our Norton Club, so thank you. And uh, maybe you start off by just telling us a little bit about the connection to Norton, and then we can ask you about your beautiful Le Mans. Sounds good. About a year ago, uh, Dave contacted me and said there was a basket case available, and I've been collecting parts for it. There were parts missing. It was like 70% complete. We collected parts like the gas tank and the seat and carburetors and so I got connected up to the Norton guys because I needed parts and and here I am. Thank you. Well I got this one on my birthday about three months ago. A project I've, I've got going to take a, an 85 Le Mans 4 and turning it into a 1000S. Still a project, I'm still making a seat for it and side covers. The story on this one is that when I got my first Moto Guzzi, I met one of the guys in the club and he had several Guzzi's and he's been into Guzzi's for a long time. And he had this one. This is an 84 Le Mans. I wasn't into this style. I always liked the rounded ones with the round headlight and wire wheels. And the early Le Mans was the one I really wanted, but I wasn't in, into the way the seat looked and the cast wheels and all of that. But I always thought it was the Le Mans that I needed. And I saw this one, it's a nice looking bike, and he, he said he'd sell it to me, but he had moved to uh, Anchorage in the meantime. And at the time I had a 77 T3, that was my first Scootsy. And so for about the same money I sold the other one for, I got this one including shipping. I've spent the last several months working on this one, getting a lot of things straight. Now that I have this one, it, it's really a sweetheart. Did it need a lot of work? Then what kind of refurbishments did you need to do? He had it 10 years and rode it 500 miles. They came with clip-ons. And so I put all that back the way it was. The brakes needed work. Um, the rear brake wasn't working. And so I de-linked the brakes. These Guzzi's come with link brakes. It was a Moto Guzzi innovation. Back in the early 70s, most of the guys were afraid of using front brakes. To kind of force guys to use a front brake, they connected the rear brake to one of the front discs. I don't like the link brakes because I mostly use the front brakes and there are times that I want to use only the rear. The linked brakes can be kind of difficult to, uh, to bleed since it's a long line coming up over and around. And so I just delinked the brakes at that time. And then when I went to handle the front brakes, it wouldn't bleed out. It, the master cylinder had gone bad. And so then I had to replace that. So I, I can't remember all the things I've done to it but it, it took quite a while. No, it didn't have any mirrors on it. It didn't have air cleaners. Um, it's only got 18,000 miles in it. It just ran great once I finally got it going. Since I first met him four years ago and I saw it, I've gotten so I like the looks of the Le Mans 3. I don't like the Le Mans 2 particularly. I like the way the Le Mans 1 looks. And I've really grown to like this 3 and it's, I love it just the way it is. There's a saying that BMW moves the body, Moto Guzzi moves the soul, and it's really true. <laughs> They're cool.
See ya. Well, thank you so much for coming over, Terry. You're welcome, Mike. We'll see you again sometime, all right? Oh, well, soon. Yeah, okay. Okay, man. See, see you. Take care. for watching guys this has been another tale from the cul-de-sac please remember to subscribe and click the little bell and you'll get a notice whenever i release a new video usually every sunday morning and sometimes during the week